Hi, my name is Lydia and I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the LGBTQ plus affinity community ambassador for the Center for Career Development. Hi, and I'm Avery. I use they, them, theirs pronouns, and I am the graduate assistant for diversity, equity, and inclusion at the Center for Career Development. And today we're going to be talking about navigating the workplace as a transgender person. So you might be asking yourself, why is talking about this topic so important? It's important for several reasons. Transgender adults are twice as likely as cisgender adults to be unemployed. Cisgender employees make 32% more money a year than transgender employees, even when the latter have similar or higher education levels. More than half of transgender employees say that they are not comfortable being out at work. Two thirds remain in the closet in professional interactions outside their own companies. People who identify as transgender also feel far less supported in the workplace than their cisgender employees do. And they report that it's harder to get workplace culture and understand benefits and harder to get promoted. They also feel less supported by their managers. So as you can see, it can be daunting to navigate the workplace as a transgender person. And today's presentation will hopefully help you feel more empowered in that journey. So one of the first steps would be to come out. Coming out can look different from person to person. It is a personal decision. You do not have to come out if you do not want to. As trans people can face an increased risk of workplace harassment and discrimination, there are some important questions you can ask yourself when debating whether or not to come out at your workplace. Such questions can include the following. You can ask yourself, does my company have any policies related to gender identity and gender expression? Could I potentially be passed over for promotion and reasons because of my gender identity and expression? What is my workplace's culture like regarding transgender people and issues? Do my coworkers seem accepting? And does my supervisor seem accepting? And what is my workplace's dress code like? Would I be able to dress in a way that matches my gender expression and identity? Once you've answered those questions for yourself, you can ask some more questions such as, does my workplace have easily accessible resources for transgender employees or LGBTQ plus employees in general? Are there any employee resource groups for transgender or LGBTQ plus employees? If I want to medically tr transition, would my healthcare plan cover any of it? And how would I want incidents of misgendering to be addressed if I want them addressed at all? If you've decided to come out at work after answering those questions for yourself, here are some next steps that you can take towards coming out. First would be contacting your human resources or HR office for assistance. They can assist you with a variety of things, such as coming up with an action plan for coming out to your colleagues, coming up with a plan for addressing misgendering incidents at work if you want to address those incidents, finding resources for transgender employees within your company. They can also help you update internal information such as profile pictures, staff biographies, names and pronouns, and things like that. And they can also help you get information on health plan coverage for transition related costs. And remember that at the end of the day, there's no right way to come out. At the end of the day, this is your life and your identity, and you're the only person who gets any say in how you express yourself. So next, we're going to be talking about navigate, navigating a dress code policy. So if dress codes were gender neutral, they would look like these guidelines. Yes, this can be difficult because gender expression through clothing is important to identity. But here are some guidelines specifically from the Human Rights Campaign Foundation. They identified seven potential examples of policies for employers to use, such as employees may wear earrings no more than two inches in length or diameter. Employees must wear suits to meetings with clients. Employees with hair below the chin must wear their hair tied back while working with or on the floor with machinery. No sweatpants or athletic apparel. No excessively dirty or worn clothing. No slip on shoes or sandals and no jewelry that can cause a safety hazard. So if the dress code were to look like a gender neutral setting, this is some inspiration with some images. They're all still gender expressive and but still can be pro professional at the same time. So next we're going to be talking about when to use legal names and preferred names. This can be tricky to navigate. So here are some guidelines on when to use chosen versus legal names. So when to use your chosen slash preferred name is on your resume, email, phone directory, or in your day-to-day -day interactions. But when to use your legal name if asked specifically on an application, background checks, social security documents, and insurance forms. 
If you've legally changed your name, then you can use your new legal name in all contexts. This makes it easier to navigate within the workplace just to make sure that everyone's comfortable, but you're also still using the correct legal mix. Another important consideration to make is laws regarding the trans rights in the workplace, depending on the state that you want to work in. So nationwide in 2020, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, which protects employees and job applicants from employment discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, and national origin, also protects LGBTQ plus people from employment discrimination based on sex stereotypes. Additionally, as of 2022, 20 U.S. states have their own laws prohibiting employment discrimination based on LGBTQ plus identity. It's important when deciding where you want to work in the country to make sure that you do research on local laws for the states that you're interested in working in. And you can use resources such as the Human Rights Campaigns Equality State and Quality Index to learn more information about the state that you want to work in. And in conclusion, at the end of the day, your journey is your own. Being transgender and navigating the workplace can feel daunting, but you're not alone in this. If you would like more information on being LGBTQ plus in the workplace, check out the LGBTQ plus affinity community page on our website at career.ucon.edu. And if you have any questions or concerns on navigating the career development journey, you can also make an appointment with one of our career coaches. Thank you.